Hey guys, and welcome back to Kids Coding Playground. Today we'll be making a scrolling maze in Scratch. So before we begin this demonstration of the game, I would like to give some of the credit to uh, Rayleigh1123 for um, designing the scrolling physics of this game. We added some extra levels and stuff like that, but his um, account will be linked into the scrap in the description below of this video. And he has also made a few videos for this channel, so be sure to check his videos out. Alright, so I'm going to start, so I'm going to play it. As you can see, when you go right, the maze scrolls to the right. Yeah, it's like a little scrolling maze. The player can look like it's moving. So as you guys know, in scrolling um, things, the player doesn't move. It's the maze itself that actually moves. So the player is actually staying in one place. The maze is just moving, simulating that the player is moving. So I have two levels right now, so let's beat this one, and then we go to the second level. So in the second level, let's get to the exit. So yeah, it's just a pretty simple um, scrolling maze. And then when you get to the end, you win. Alright. So first, let's create a new project. Alright, so in our new project, let's rename our project to scroll maze. Oops. Scrolling maze. Okay, we can keep the scratch cat. Let's just name, name, rename it to player. We'll keep the scratch cat. And um, right here, I'm going to import my own maze right here. Oops. Alright, so this is the maze. So you guys can make your own maze. I think in another video, I think it's the um, mouse and the cheese video, we also gave this maze away. So you can check that video. Um, it's the mouse maze runner game. So you can uh, check that out. We have it in there, or you can draw your own. We'll also be putting this link through Google Drive to the, this video description as well. So if you'd like to take this maze, you may. You can also make your own. All right, so first in the maze, I'll show you the costume. So basically inside, it's just, um, we have two costumes. One is for this one. So last time I accidentally resized this way too big. So I guess we'll just keep it like this. Um, we, we just have to set the X and Y position to a little bit different place. So as you can see, these two are different sizes. <clears throat> so, our maze is basically just a bunch of, uh, uh, blocks. Alright. Let's go to the code for the maze. So in the maze, for the last game I did, I put, I'm gonna zoom in, so, we're gonna get it when we if I clicked. And then I went to zero negative 194. This was the position I had last time. Alright, and as you can see in our maze, we have some costume called costume 1, which is a blank costume, and we will need this. So basically in Scratch, if you switch it to the first costume, increase the size, um, and switch back to the first maze, the maze 1, it will actually change the size of it. So, you can set this to like, 600 and it'll actually set the size to 600 without switching the costume it will it will cap the limit at 150 actually so as you can see it did get set to 600 size so putting that costume can actually help it will um uh, somehow allow you to um actually switch it to the size amount you want so i'm gonna set it back to 150 because that's the one i had last time 150 is the perfect size i guess all right and then after this we're gonna Go get a forever loop, so forever, okay, if, if then statement, so if, we're going to do the or, so if the up arrow key or W key is pressed, so we're going to do, we're going to let the player use both W, A, S, D, or the arrow keys, so W, alright, then we are going to change the Y by negative 7, so you may be asking, why don't we change it by positive 7, because we're going up, well, the background, this maze is scrolling, right? So we want to simulate the players going up, so we have to make it go down. So we're going to change the Y by negative 7 instead of positive 7. Negative 7. And then we're going to get an if then statement and put that inside here. So if it's touching the player, so if the maze is touching the player, we're not going to let it go through the walls. So we're going to make it change the Y by 7 to not allow it to get past. All right? And after that, we're going to just duplicate this and put that under here. So next, we're going to do the down arrow. So down arrow is pressed. Um, 
or the key S is pressed, S, then we are going to change the Y by 7. So as, remember, we have to simulate how it's scrolling. So moving up for the maze is basically moving down for the cat. And then we're going to change the Y by negative 7 if it tries to hit the wall. Alright, so now we've finished the up and down movement. Let's duplicate all of this. We're going to make the left and right movement now. So when the left arrow key is pressed, left arrow key or A key is pressed, then we're going to we're going to, have to change the X this time. So instead, um, for the left arrow key, we are going to change the X by 7 to simulate as if it's going to the le uh, left. So we're going to change the X by 7. Um, change X by 7 and put this back in. And we're going to take this out and we're going to do change X by negative 7. If it's touching the player, so then it won't let it pass. And same right here, we're going to do if key right arrow or key D is pressed. Key D is pressed, then we are going to take this out for a sec. And then we're going to change the X by negative 7 to make it as if the player is going to the right. And then we're going to put this back in and then we're going to change the x by 7 so it will not pass the wall so as you can see this is what we have so far it's the maze movement so yeah that's pretty much it so i'm gonna put the player right here so as you can see you can see the maze kind of move the player can't get past yeah as you can see we're probably gonna have to make the player a little bit smaller so it'll actually work so as you can see the scrolling is working now all right Okay, so inside the player, we're going to go into the player, we have to add some code in here. So, in the beginning, when green flag clicked inside the player, let's zoom in a little. When green flag is clicked, then we're going to switch the costume to costume 1. I'm going to make the player, like, have a little walk animation, so we're going to switch to costume 1. And I want to set the size of the player to 40% in the beginning. And then the position I had him at last time was negative 63. And the Y position is 41, All right? And we're going to set the rotation style to left and right so it won't flip upside down when you're moving around. And then we're just going to make the little uh, walk cycle for the player. So uh, forever loop um, if left arrow or A is being pressed. So we're going to or if key left arrow or key um, A is pressed, then we're going to point in direction of negative 90. Um, I mean, positive 90, because it's right arrow. I'm sorry, this should be left arrow, sorry. So we're going to do negative 90. So if key left arrow or A is pressed, which is going to the left, we're going to point in direction of negative 90, which is going to the left. And then we're going to do next costume. And then we're going to wait at 0 0.1 seconds. Okay or else it'll look way too quick. And then we're gonna duplicate this in time. So when the key right arrow is pressed, or key D, oops, D, then we're going to point in direction of 90 instead of negative 90, okay? And then we duplicate this, we're gonna do the up and down walk cycle. So instead for the up and down, we're just gonna take this point in direction out. So I'm not gonna make the, when you're going up or down, uh, point in any direction. So we're going to go up arrow and W. And we're just going to do the next costume. And then we're going to do down arrow or S. So I'm not going to make it point in any direction when you're going up and down. So let's take that out. Alright. So let's play it. Alright. So I'll show you the code real quick. So this is the movement walk costumes. Okay, let's pause it. Okay. As you can see, the maze is scrolling around, and the player is um has has a little walk cycle, a little walking animation. As you can see, you can still do this, as you can't we haven't coded to go to the next level yet. So yeah, so now the player can actually walk around, and the maze actually kind of scrolls. All right, let's go back to the maze for a second. All right, so we're gonna make a timer. We're gonna make a timer. Timer, so we're going to show the timer. And then when green flag clicked, we are going to set the timer to zero. We're just gonna make a little timer running in the background. We're also gonna add a high score, stuff like that. 
And then we're going to get a forever loop. We're going to get a control. Oops. Um, control forever. We're going to set the timer variable to the timer right here. So we can actually control it using the variable. All right. And next, we are going to allow the player advance to the next level. So when green flag clicks, so right here, um, so remember, as I said, when you go down with the player, the maze is moving up because it simulates the player going down. So let's go to the end real quick. So as you can see in the maze sprite right here, the coordinates are moving repeatedly. So let's say the Y position is greater than 370. So when the Y position is greater than 370, like about right here, then we are going to switch the costume to costume two, which is the second maze. So once the Y position for the maze passes, like right here, then we are going to switch um, the backdrop, I mean the costume, to the next maze. So we're gonna have forever loop. If the Y position is greater than Y position is greater than 370. 370, then we're going to switch the costume to maze 2, which is the second maze. And then we're going to make the player, I mean, we're going to make the maze go back to its original position, as I have right here. Alright. So now we can play it. Let's get to the end. It should work. All right, see, as you can see, as soon as we got past the Y position is greater than 370, we automatically went to the next level. So after this level, I'm going to allow the player to win. So we're going to get an if then statement again. So if, let's play it. I want to see um, how what uh, the X position has to be greater than in order for the player to um, win. So right here, I'm going to keep on going. So the exit's right here. So let's say the X position is uh, less than, um, if it's less than a certain amount, we will let it um, pass. So let's say um, uh, maybe like right here, negative 448, okay? So if the X position is less than, so as you can see, the maze is moving to the left because it's scrolling, so we're going to do if the X position is less than negative 448, negative 448, then we're going to broadcast a message <clears throat> and called win. And we're going to stop this for now, and then we're going to make a new message. Let's name it win. All right, so now we're going to make a new sprite, and we're going to paint it. Excuse the text. I'm going to make it green. So why not? I'm going to write you, you win. I'm going to capitalize that. Okay, you win. Let's make it big. All right. Center the sprites. All right. Now we have the you win text. We're going to code in it. So let's rename the sprite real quick to win. And then we're going to go to the code. So inside the code for the you win sprite, we're going to one green flag click. Go to zero zero, which is the origin of the um screen and then we're going to go to the front layer and we're going to hide okay and then when i receive the message win on the um, win sprite we're going to show and right now we're going to make a new variable we're gonna this is high score we're gonna make it a cloud variable so it will store on the server so we're gonna name it high score high score all right Let's put the high score on like this side. Um, and so inside here we are going to get an if then statement. So when I receive win, show if the timer is less than the high score. So basically, the lower the time is, the better the score is because this is like a speed run game kind of. So if the timer is less than high score, then we are going to set the variable high score to the timer. And we're going to stop all after this. All right. So now let's test out our game. 
Oh yeah, and I forgot. Let's reset our high score real quick. Set high score back to zero. Actually, no, I'll set it to like 50 or something, so then we can easily break this high score. Alright, let's go full screen real quick. Alright. So as you can see, we are able to move around. Let's see, exit, we go on to the second level. Also, if you want to add op uh, like coins or something, don't put them into the maze sprite because it will not work. It will just come out bouncing out because we already have coded that if the cat is touching it, it won't go through. And as you can see, once it's greater, uh, less than some position, it will say you win. And it will set the high score to the fastest time. So let's say I, I do this even quicker than what I did before. Then it should set this new high score. Um in place of the other one. As you can see, the high score has changed. So yeah, that's pretty much for today's tutorial. Um, scrolling maze. So thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.